Hey, welcome back to the Coding Circus. Today we are going to look at for loops. It's another way of going through a listing of things or doing things repeatedly. In the last lesson we looked at while loops. The difference between while loops and for loops is, is going to be that a while loop will continue to go while a certain condition is true. It could run on forever or it could not run at all. It all depends upon that condition. A for loop is a little different. A for loop will iterate a specific number of times. So there has to be something for the for loop to count. So let's dive in the code and see what we're going to be counting. So to get started, I'm going to use a little list here. We're going to call it fruit. Fruits, because there's more than one. And we'll do our infamous apple, banana, and cherry. So this is going to be the thing our for loop is going to count. And we're going to say for uh, stuff in fruits. print stuff. So what's going to happen here is this for loop structure says for every single thing in fruits, we're going to assign, <coughs> excuse me, each item temporarily to the variable stuff. And then we're going to print stuff on the screens. So we're going to print what is temporarily stored in stuff. Then we're going to go back up to the top of the loop and get another thing from the loop. It will automatically index through this loop. We don't have to put any numbers or in this. Uh, Python will take care of that for us. And I'm going to run this. Oh, it wants me to save my changes. And I can see it prints out apple, banana, and cherry. That's a lot uh, nicer formatting than just printing fruits. I could print fruits. Remember, we can print a list. And when I do it that way, it ends up still giving me that list structure with the brackets, which I may not want if I'm displaying this on the screen. So you can see the difference between the two. Uh, it either prints it as a list if I just print fruits, but if I print it using the for each loop, I can get to each individual item and print that on the screen. The other way we had of doing that was indexing. I could index fruits. little review of lists here for you, zero, and print that to the screen. And that will just print the first item indexed at zero, which would be an apple, onto the screen. Now, since it theoretically a, a string is really just a collection or a listing of letters, we can do the same thing with a string. I'm going to comment out some of these things here because we're probably, oh, I'll just delete it. I'm going to do 4x in banana. And print x. Now also notice the structure. We still have a semicolon at the end of the line that tells Python this is going to be what we're going to loop through. And then I still have this indenting here. Anything that is indented in is going to be part of that loop. So I'm going to run this and it's going to print out every single letter on the screen for me. Isn't that pretty cool? Now we also have, just like we had in the while loop, we also had the break statement. So we'll go back to our fruits again. I'm going to do this the quick way. Oops. Maybe not the quick way. Certainly quicker than me typing it all, I think. There we go. Go back to fruits, apple, banana, cherry. For x in fruits this time, we'll just use the letter x. We're going to print x on the screen. But if x is, is equal to banana, 
we should stop printing. So when I run this, we only get apple and banana. It never gets to the cherry. So mu it behaves much like the way we saw it behave inside of our while loop. Really doesn't do uh, anything all that different. Um, if we wanted to, we can put the break before the print. Think about what's going to happen this time. It's going to get to Apple. It's apples, not banana, so it's going to print Apple. Then it's going to get to banana, but then um, banana is going to make a break, so it's never going to print banana on the screen. So the order of which we do this is going to be important when you put your breaks in. And we can see this time it only prints Apple on the screen. So the order is going to matter here where we put that break. There is also a continue statement, and that's going to behave the same way it did with the while loops. This is one of the nice things about Python is there is a lot of consistency in the way statements behave and the structure of the language. So here, in this case, instead of using um, a break, I'm going to use the word continue. So it's going to first uh, set up my for loop with my colon here, letting me know this is the beginning of my block. And if the fruit is a banana, I, I should really just skip it and go back up to the top of the loop. I should not continue on and print X. So this time I'm only going to get apple and cherry. And you can see this time when I run it, I only get apple and cherry on the screen. Make this bigger for you to see. Sorry about that. OK. So now we're going to talk about range. Suppose we wanted to count through actual numbers. Rather than counting through a particular list, suppose we wanted to count through 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and just print those numbers on the screen. Well, to do that, we have to use a command called range. So first, let's take a little side trip here. And I'm going to just use a print statement. And I'm going to print the range six on the screen. I think it'll be fine with doing this for us. And it prints the numbers, it's going to print the numbers zero to six, but it doesn't include the six. So the default is to start at zero and then count zero, one, two, three, four, five, and not print the six. Now we've seen this structure before. Remember we looked at the colon structure? Um, we were looking at doing substrings. Uh, of our our uh, strings where we it indexed at zero and then one zero one two three four five but didn't get the last one in our range so again that's consistency so let's go in and see how this works inside of a for loop so for um, let's do my num in range six print my num. Oh, I should probably use snake case here. Let's be appropriate. There we go. Run this, and it prints on the screen 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, noting it's not going to print the 6. So that's the range. I could also choose to have it start somewhere else. I could have it start at 2 and go from 2 to 6. And this time when it runs, it starts at 2, 3, 4, 5, and does not do 6. Now, the other interesting thing you can do with ranges is you can make it count by a particular value. So suppose I wanted to count from, uh, let's start at 2, let's start at 1, we'll start at 2, to 30, and we're going to count by 3s. So when I run that, it's going to count by threes, 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, 20, 23, 26. And go starting at 2 all the way up to 29. Now, if I started it, and actually let's go to 33 and see what it does there. Ah, it only goes up to 32. It stops. Actually, let me go 32. 
Let me try 35. I'm trying to get it to show. It still stops at 32. Even though 29 plus 3 um, is 33, um, no, sorry, 34, it's not going to show the 34 because it stops at 35. Now that sounds weird, but it, it's going to stop at the number that is 1 less than, or in this case, 3 less than 35. So it's not going to do the, um, the 30. Five. It's going to stop before it gets to the 35. So that kind of rule where it doesn't get to that last number still applies even when you're counting by threes. <coughs> Just with the while loop, um, we also have an else, which I think is a little strange. But uh, let's say we say four range six again. And we say else. This is just going to print something to the screen when the loop is done. That's it. It's, it behaves in a similar way to the way the while loop behaved, where we did the else. But the difference is, I, I guess the, the else with the while loop in my mind makes a little bit more sense because it's a conditional. But the designers of Python wanted to keep that idea of parallelism where you're doing the similar kinds of structures for everything. So if the else works with the while, the else should also work with the for loop. You can also put a break um, inside our else block. So we could do something like this. where we say uh, 4x in range 6, if x is equal to 3, break. Else, print finally finished. So it's still going to print the finally finished, but it's going to print it um, after it prints to 3. And also notice we're using this structure where we had the break up on the same line. You could put it down on the, on the other line if the structure makes a little bit more sense to you. So when I run this, you can see it prints 0, 1, 2. But then the break kicks it totally out of the loop. It will not print finally finished. It stops everything. The only way to get it to actually print finally finished would be to take that out of the loop. And now it says the finally finished. So having that else statement, if you're combining it with the break, then it kind of makes sense because now um, it's not going to do anything. It's a hard break. It loop completely exits out of the loop and moves on to the next line, which in this case would be line 7. Of the code. So if I run it this time, you can see it's not going to say finally finished. It's just going to say end. So let's jump into um, Wizard now. And let's try to use some of the things that we learned with our 3D environment. Now, first, I want to show you that I, I'm going to do it without the Viz Connect this time. I'm just going to use the Viz Go. I think it might run a little bit faster when it develops. And since you probably are going to want to play with this and kind of make some of these numbers bigger, I know people, that's a normal thing that people want to do, is they want to put lots of beach balls on the screen. So I'm going to start with six. And it says, for each ball, a ball count in range 6, add um, a beach ball. And notice I did the same thing I did before. I changed my numbers a little bit because I want it to appear right in front of me. I don't want to have to move around. So I positioned it 0. The ball count, this is going to be vertical. And then 5 puts it in that z-axis, not the z-axis, the um, x-axis away from me. So this is my vertical. This is to my left and right. So 0 is left and right, so it's going to be right in front of me. Ball count is going to be vertically, so they're going to be stacked on top of each other. And then the 5 kind of pushes it forward in front of me in the virtual environment so I can see it when it first loads. And I'm going to put in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And when I run this, you'll see it should technically run a lot faster. So I'm going to pause the video. There you go. You see how quickly that ran? 
Oh, I've got to be careful because I can very easily lose track of where I am because there's nothing else in the environment. Oh, if that happens, you might want to reload it. Be careful not to touch the mouse. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to back up from it a little bit. Maybe. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Oh, I forgot. It's different controls this time. There we go. I'm using my mouse. Back up a little bit. There we go. And I can see all the um, beach balls are put in there. If you want to have some experiments and, and kind of give this a try, what we can do is we can try to put this in different spots. So I'm just going to copy this code and switch this around and maybe make ball count in this position of my location. And we'll put a zero here. And then maybe I want to do ball count in this position over here. Ah, gotta be careful. Don't want to delete everything. Let's say zero. And we'll say ball count. Okay. So that'll kind of push it out in front of me. I might want to do, well, we'll leave it that way. And then the last one I think I want to do, I think it's going to be kind of fun. Instead of putting the a bunch of spheres on the screen, I'm going to put one sphere on the screen, but instead I'm going to make it change size as it moves. So we're going to do ball count. Let's do this one kind of further away from us. Oh, I guess this will work. And then I'm going to make this the scale ball count. I'm going to do it in all the scale numbers so the ball doesn't get distorted. But theoretically, now I should have balls, um, beach balls that are increasing in size as they go across the screen. So let's see what we got here. I got a lot going on here. Hopefully it all works. Relaunch. This might take a little bit longer. Oh, like two seconds to load all the resources. And here is our 3D environment. And we can see, oh, you can see those beach balls getting bigger right as they go further away. And it looks like we kind of have an X and Y axis. Well, it'd be kind of fun if we could do this in a way where, whoop, I got to loop back around. Um, <laughs> I'm going too fast. Uh, it'd be fun if we could do this in a way where we could fill in an entire grid. So that's what we're going to do next time. We're going to look at a special way of putting the loops together and doing what's called a nested for loop. That's all I have for you today. I'll see you next time.